Good morning, good afternoon and good evening to all denarians on the go and in the know. Please hit the like subscribe and share to help support our channel. Check out the Currency Exchange Planner, the number one pre and post RV planning tool for the dinar community. Mention the denarian and get the mobile app added onto the planner package for free in addition to the extra 20% off for all my subscribers. Start the new year off right. Invest in yourself and your family's well-being today. With the currency exchange planner on your phone at exchange, you will have everything right in your hand you will need to safeguard your exchange. You will have all your serial numbers logged for each note, not only for fraud prevention, but as extra peace of mind with the IRS when they come knocking at your door. We did a video on the exchange planner it is at the top of the Denarian YouTube page. It walks you through the software, and gives you a full tour of all the benefits it has to offer. Go check it out after this video. I also recently did a video on the new Carrot Bar Savings Program, if you have not checked it out yet, now is the time to get involved so I can help you to protect your money from the pending upcoming financial crash, it's free to register and you will be ahead of everyone else as de-dollarization occurs and everyone else loses their savings. Get yourself set up today, and be a part of my savings team of tomorrow. Make sure you don't lose everything in your regular bank accounts owned by the crooks at the bank that don't care about you, only making money off your money as it sits in their bank. Do you really think they just let your cash sit in a vault until you come pick it up again? One concept that people do not understand is, once you deposit your hard-earned dollars in the bank, it becomes their money, until such time that you come and want it back. The Carrot Bar program is the true future of money. It is a gold savings program that takes the blockchain technology to the next level, to protect your savings. It is literally the ultimate hedge against a market crash. You have the opportunity of a lifetime to get in on the ground floor of this program with me. Do yourself a favor and start backing your hard-earned cash with gold. The Carrot Bar program and the Currency Exchange Planner work hand in hand with each other in protecting your finances. The link to the Carrot Bar Savings Program and the Currency Exchange Planner are in the description drop down below. I encourage you, stay ahead of the rest, take the initiative, and join me today on the blockchain based Carrot Bar program and let me help you to save the smart way, in real money. In addition to the Denarian Facebook page, I am posting on the Denarian blog as well, go check it out, all the links are in the description box below this video. The blog as well as the Facebook page have all the news throughout the day. I post them there as it comes out in real time. First article of interest for today. Trump, Iran will never have a nuclear weapon. U.S. President Donald Trump posted on his Twitter account a tweet in which he said that Iran will not have a nuclear weapon. On Monday, January 6, 2020, the U.S. president tweeted that Iran would not have a nuclear weapon. Next article of interest, the Russian president. The countries of the world have declared their readiness to work in Iraq in the event of an American exit. Russian President Putin said Monday, January 6, 2020, in response to Trump's statement to impose sanctions on Iraq in the event of U.S. forces leaving. He said, Trump's statements threatening Baghdad with sanctions are words that Baghdad will not be affected by, because Iraq today is not Iraq yesterday, which is hostile to most countries of the world, and that more than 60 countries declared their readiness to work in Iraq in case of America's exit. He also added, Moscow was and still is with Baghdad, and the only one affected by Washington's sanctions is Washington itself. Next article of interest. U.S. Secretary of Defense, we are not planning to withdraw from Iraq. U.S. Defense Secretary Mark Asper said that Washington has no plans to withdraw from Iraq. He stated that his team is trying to find out more about the memo on withdrawing from Iraq, stressing, we have no plans to withdraw. It could be about redeployment, not withdrawal. The local and foreign media had published a document attributed to operations of the International Alliance on starting arrangements for the withdrawal of U.S. forces from Iraq. It reads, 
out of respect for the sovereignty of the Republic of Iraq and as requested by the Iraqi Parliament and the Prime Minister. The Joint Task Force Command Operation Solid Resolve will relocate the forces during the coming days and weeks. The statement added, in order to accomplish this mission, the coalition forces must take certain measures to ensure a safe exit from Iraq. He continued, during this time there will be an increase in helicopter flights over and around the Green Zone in Baghdad. He stressed that the coalition forces will take all measures to ease the inconvenience to the public. This will be the implementation of the tasks during the night hours and emphasize the value of our partnership in inviting us to support Jamhoriyakm at the time of need during the defeat of the organization. And we respect the sovereign decision which demanded Brahilna. Next article of interest. Trump says, U.S. will not leave Iraq unless billions for air base are repaid, threatens Baghdad with very big sanctions. Just hours after Iraq voted to expel U.S. troops stationed in Iraq, Trump made it clear that he has no interest in vacating the nation that has been a stalwart U.S. military outpost in the Middle East for nearly two decades ever since it was invaded by, well, the U.S. in search of non-existent weapons of mass destruction, and speaking to reporters on Air Force One said, we're not leaving unless Iraq pays us back for a U.S. air base built in Iraq. We have a very extraordinarily expensive air base that there. It cost billions of dollars to build. Long before my time. We're not leaving unless they pay us back for it. Trump told the Av1 reporter pool. That, however, wasn't enough. And Trump also made it clear that that in addition to billions in reimbursements, unless the U.S. left on a very friendly basis, the U.S. would hit Iraq with very big sanctions like they've never seen before ever. If they do ask us to leave, if we don't do it in a very friendly basis, we will charge them sanctions like they've never seen before ever. It'll make Iranian sanctions look somewhat tame. And just to make it abundantly clear, Trump also added that if there's any hostility, that they do anything we think is inappropriate, we are going to put sanctions on Iraq, very big sanctions on Iraq. Trump also addressed his Saturday threat to attack various Iranian cultural sites in retaliation to any escalation out of Tehran, threatening major retaliation on Iran if they do anything, and saying that they're allowed to kill our people. They're allowed to torture and maim our people. They're allowed to use roadside bombs and blow up our people and we are not allowed to touch their cultural sites. It doesn't work that way. Next article of interest. The Economic Cost of the Iraqi-American Clash. Nabi El Marsumi. 1. There is a high possibility that the United States will freeze Iraqi oil revenues that pass through the U.S. Federal Bank to Iraq, as well as the possibility of freezing Iraq's investments in U.S. Treasury bonds which amount to $32.7 billion, and freezing Iraq's other assets in American banks and financial institutions. 2. The collapse of the Iraqi dinar exchange rate due to the scarcity of foreign currencies and the suspension of the currency auction for the Iraqi central bank, which depends on the influx of oil dollars, which will lead to monetary instability and to price turmoil and its rise. 3. A significant decline in the Iraqi cash reserves in the Central Bank of Iraq, which depend on the flow of oil money and thus eroded ability to defend the Iraqi dinar exchange rate. 4. The investment environment in Iraq will deteriorate greatly, Iraq will become a repellent for investment, and many international companies will refrain from investing in Iraq because of the security, political and economic instability that prevails in the country. 5. The 2020 budget will suffer from a real crisis due to the significant decline in public revenues on the one hand and the stop of international and American institutions from lending to Iraq, which is one of the important sources of financing the Iraqi budget deficit. 6. A significant decline in the production and export capacity of crude oil due to the expected withdrawal of U.S. and foreign companies in general operating in the fields of licensing contracts as well as the suspension of projects aimed at developing the gas industry and infrastructure for the Iraqi oil sector. 7. 
a sharp decrease in the volume of Iraqi foreign trade for each of the exports and imports funded mainly from oil revenues, which will lead to a huge rise in the levels of prices for goods and services and to a decline in the country's revenues from ports and border ports. 8. The state's inability to provide salaries for employees, retirees, and those covered by the social protection network that depends 87% on oil revenues, and that it is hoped that these salaries will increase by 14 trillion dinars in the 2020 budget to implement governmental and parliamentary reform packages. 9. The United States is expected to abolish the exception granted to Iraq by importing gas and electricity from Iran, which will negatively affect the supply of electricity to citizens. 10. The significant loss is that the Iraqi banking sector will be exposed to due to possible U.S. sanctions. 11. Iraq will have to pay several billion dollars to the United States in exchange for its evacuation of its military bases in Iraq. 12. The decline in performance in the Iraqi economy, especially in the sectors of agriculture, industry, construction, and transportation which will exacerbate the problems of poverty and unemployment in Iraq. 13. The great damage that will be caused to the Iranian economy, which depends a lot on Iraq, as Iran exports to Iraq $12 billion worth of goods annually that contribute greatly to reducing the severity of U.S. sanctions on it, as well as stopping the flow of Iranian oil through Iraq and to the decline in the number of Iraqi tourists to Iran which limits the flow of foreign currencies to Iran, as well as the suspension of oil derivatives imported by Syria from Iran through Iraq, as well as the endeavors aimed at linking rail networks between Iraq and Iran as part of a broader plan to enable Iran to transport its goods to Syria and its Mediterranean ports. Next article of interest, the central bank reassures citizens about the dollar reserve. The Central Bank of Iraq reassured the Iraqi people about the Iraqi reserves of the dollar, stressing its continued pumping of the dollar to the market, while warning of rumors that there are problems impeding the flow of the dollar. The Director General of Financial Operations and Administration at the Central Bank, Mahmoud Dagger said, Iraq's reserves and external assets are obligated in the custodian of these deposits, bonds, cash, or gold to be paid upon request. He pointed out that the flow of money to cover imports and the needs of the dollar is reassuring and there is no real justification for fear in relation to economic changes. He added that Iraq's reserves are present in all countries of the world and not only the Federal Reserve, noting that central banks do not deal with reactions from contradictions or tugging. Dagger pointed out that the central bank continues to pump the dollar to the market on demand and there is no problem that impedes the flow of the dollar to the markets. In the same context, a member of the Parliamentary Commission on Economy and Investment, Independent MP Abbas al Atafi, said in a press statement, Iraq has the ability to manage the oil file in addition to energy, as it owned many companies that work for it to manage these areas, away from America. He added, Iraq does not need America with regard to oil or energy, as today it needs to preserve its sovereignty from American interference and its violation of Iraqi sovereignty and international norms. al stressed, the absence of any economic concerns about Iraq by boycotting it and removing the American forces from its lands, in addition to the absence of any financial concerns, especially that Iraq is able to manage the stage on its own. Next article of interest. Abdul Mahdi and Barzani discuss close cooperation in order to preserve the security and sovereignty of Iraq. Prime Minister Adel Abdul Mahdi made a phone call to the leader of the Kurdistan Democratic Party, Massoud Barzani. According to the statement of the Information Office of the Prime Minister, during the call, discussions were made on developments in the events, the nature of the contacts taking place around them, the Iraqi position on them the continuation of joint national action and close cooperation in a manner that preserves Iraq's security, national interests and sovereignty, is over. Next article of interest. Al-Habausi and Al-Hakim discuss the issue of forming the interim government. Speaker of the House of Representatives, Mohammed Al-Habausi, and the head of the opposition National Wisdom Movement, 
Amr al-Hakim, discussed on Monday the formation of the interim government. The media office of the Speaker of the House of Representatives, in a statement received by Mawazin News, said that al Haldousi received the head of the National Wisdom Stream, Amr al-Hakim. The statement added, the meeting discussed developments in the political and security situations taking place in the country and the region, and the file of forming a government cabinet in line with the aspirations of the Iraqi people. The parties affirmed, the importance of the role of the House of Representatives to conduct broad reforms and enact the necessary legislation. Next article of interest. In Iraq, Trump's sanctions threat brings bitter flashbacks. U.S. President Donald Trump's threat to sanction Iraqis like they've never seen before if Baghdad kicks out American troops has brought back haunting memories of a decade under international embargo. If the U.S. imposes sanctions on Iraq, the dinar will plummet and will be sent back to the past, to the days of the economic embargo, said Hisham Abbas, an Iraqi shopping in a commercial district of the capital. On Sunday, Iraq's parliament voted to urge the government to oust foreign troops from its soil, among them some 5,200 U.S. troops helping local forces beat back jihadists. Trump quickly slammed the decision. If they do ask us to leave, if we don't do it in a very friendly basis, we will charge them sanctions like they've never seen before, he said. It'll make Iranian sanctions look somewhat tame. Under ex-dictator Saddam Hussein, Iraq was put under crippling global sanctions and an oil embargo seen as the toughest in history, cutting off trade and financial interactions with the outside world. Its GDP was slashed in half, the Iraqi din ar collapsed and dozens of factories shuttered, leaving families relying on ration cards and slim salaries. The measures were lifted in the years following the U.S.-led invasion in 2003 and Iraq's economy has slowly tried to reintegrate with the rest of the world. It is now OPEC's second biggest crude producer and living standards have risen. Most Iraqis own imported clothes, phones, cars and computers. Sanctions, nuclear option, but after Trump's comments, bitter memories of shortages and collapsed currencies came rushing back. Everything the Iraqi people suffered in the 1990s will come back. The economic embargo will come back, worried Saleh, a middle-aged Iraqi with a thick mustache. It'll be like the era of Saddam Hussein, and worse. There won't be any cash left, said Samer, another shopper. The U.S. has been particularly angered in recent months by repeated rocket attacks targeting the U.S. Embassy and American troops. In response to those attacks, a senior U.S. official at the Baghdad embassy told AFP months ago that Washington was considering a range of ways to ramp up pressure on Iraq. One possibility is sanctions, and limiting the cash that comes into Iraq. That would be the nuclear option, the official said. The U.S. has already blacklisted Iraqi nationals, armed groups and even banks for their ties to Tehran and has hinted more sanctions are coming. But they have so far left alone Iraq's oil revenues, which make up more than 90% of the state's budget. U.S. and Iraqi officials previously told AFP that an oil embargo, like the one imposed now on Iran, would be too hurtful to a country considered an ally by Washington. The U.S. has so far sought to shield Iraq from the impact of its energy sanctions on Tehran by granting Baghdad a waiver to keep importing Iranian electricity delusional, but Sunday's vote could change all that. One of the steps the international community could take would be halting financial interactions with Iraq, Speaker Mohammad Halbusi told MPs during the session. We would no longer be able to keep up our commitments to Iraqi citizens, he warned. In his comments on Sunday, Trump went further than just sanctions threatening to make Iraq reimburse Washington for a very extraordinarily expensive base hosting U.S. troops. We're not leaving unless they pay us back for it, he said. The president did not specify which base but he visited U.S. troops in late 2018 at Ain al-Assad, built in the 1980s. Iraqis feel humiliated, and rightly so, by the latest claims by Donald Trump on reimbursement said Karim Bitter of the Paris-based Institute of International and Strategic Relations. It's delusional. 
it is reminiscent of Trump wanting to make Mexico pay for building the wall. Hit the like and subscribe to be alerted as more articles of interest unfold. Be sure to visit my new blog and find me on Facebook, so you get the news in real time as it breaks throughout the day. Harness the power of the currency exchange planner, the number one tool made by denarians for denarians. Use the promo code FEEDENARIAN for the additional pre-negotiated discount and the mobile app added free at no charge for all my subscribers. Get on board the blockchain gold savings carrot bar program today. You don't have to wait until you're filthy rich to get involved. It's free. And the program was made so anyone can save in gold and avoid the repercussions of the possible upcoming market crash. One of the true forms of money away from the fiat system, gold. Protect your family's wealth today. I would not recommend something I do not stand behind and believe in 110%. Did you ever hear the term, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink? The links are in the description below. Get involved now. Knowledge is power. Over and out for now. The Denarian.